A few years ago, Ford amazed the whole automotive world with its decision to bring back one of its most iconic nameplates. The legendary off-roader came back after several decades, and off-road enthusiasts were particularly happy because they finally got the chance to choose something that's not a Wrangler, and the Bronco turned out to be an excellent alternative. However, no car is perfect, so the new Bronco also suffers from some drawbacks. For this video, we prepared seven frustrating things Ford Bronco drivers simply refuse to admit. Number 7. Lack of modern-day convenience features Yes, we could talk all day long about how the Bronco is an off-road vehicle, designed primarily for rock crawling, desert running, and similar things, but let's be honest, it's also designed to provide decent on-road comfort. After all, Ford decided to install more refined front suspension in order to attract all those drivers who don't like the fact that the Wrangler relies on a super rigid suspension. Read solid axles. And even if we exclude such a constellation, it's hard to understand why the new Bronco is missing some of the convenience features that are pretty much essential in the modern auto automotive world. This particularly refers to the rear passengers. The Ford Bronco features a pretty long wheelbase and it's pretty generous with the passenger space in the second row. At the same time, the second row is missing a couple of essentials. If you look at the backside of the center console, you'll notice that there are no air vents for the rear passengers. Ford did install some vents under the seats, but they're nowhere near as capable as those you would normally find on the center console. The lack of cup holders is another obvious drawback. Namely, other than a couple of holders at the front, on the center console, there is no area where you can place your drink and once again, the rear passengers feel neglected in particular. But another problem is that even the driver's seat is missing some of the things that we thought we would call essentials. Namely, the driver's seat belt is not adjustable, so we can't say they work perfectly for drivers of all sizes. Number 6. Forget about steering and braking feedback. Once again, we are getting to the fact that the new Bronco is also designed to perform well on the road. Of course, no one expects a vehicle of this kind to be spectacular in this aspect, but the Bronco feels extremely dull, even by the standards of the segment, where some of the key competitors are the Jeep Wrangler and Toyota 4Runner. First of all, there's the steering feel, which doesn't exist at all. Of course, that's partly because of the massive tires, but no matter the reason, things can be pretty tricky at higher speeds, where you really don't get any feedback from the road. The same thing is with the brake pedal, which is extremely extremely dull. Don't get us wrong, the stopping power is very good, but there really is no feedback, so it's a little bit tricky to apply the right amount of braking in some situations. Number 5. Driver Assistance Features the new Ford Bronco may be a hardcore off-road SUV, but it is also a modern vehicle that needs to come with all kinds of advanced active safety systems, and indeed there are some pretty cool things. For example, base models come standard with a rear-view camera, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, automatic high beams, etc. Moreover, you could also get upgrades such as parking sensors, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, surround view camera, and more. This may look pretty impressive on paper, but some of the aforementioned systems are far from perfect. For example, one of the things we don't like is the adaptive cruise control, which doesn't have a so-called stop-and-go feature. In other words, unlike most modern cars, including various Ford models, the Bronco can keep the distance only to a certain point. It can't make a complete stop and then restart without getting on the gas pedal. But let's be fair, this definitely isn't a major drawback. It's just that we feel it's a little bit of a shame, considering that most other Ford models have this feature and that it works pretty well. Also worth mentioning is that, as we've said, Lane Keep Assist is available as an option, but not with the lane centering feature, which means that the Bronco can keep itself between the lines but can't be in the middle of its lane unless the driver takes full control. Number 4. Audio System is Far From Great Another thing that most Bronco drivers refuse to admit is that the audio system is anything but great. We're not saying it's bad, but it's not great either. Base models come with a 7-speaker audio system, and you can upgrade it to 10 if you're willing to pay extra. But no matter the choice, your favorite music won't sound as great as you would probably expect. And that's not just because of the quality of the speakers, which, to be honest, is pretty decent. The bigger problem is the position. As you know, the Bronco features removable doors, so you won't find speakers in there. Instead, a couple of them are positioned in the footwell, which is anything but an ideal position for a speaker. While the units on top of the dashboard won't help much either, things are a little bit better in the back, where you can find a couple of speakers behind the rear seats, which actually do a pretty decent job. Once again, this isn't a major flaw, but it's good to know that the 12-speaker Alpine audio system available in the Jeep Wrangler is way superior, both in terms of volume and the actual sound quality. Number 3. Fender Flares Are Super Easy To Detach 
When Ford engineers were designing the new Bronco, they knew very well that this SUV would be primarily purchased by enthusiasts, and we all know what enthusiasts like to do. They love to modify their vehicles. The Bronco indeed was designed with the ability to be modified in many ways in mind, and while that's generally a fantastic thing, there are a few things that could have been executed a little bit better. One of them is the way the fender flares are attached. In order to make the removal super easy, Ford engineers and designers use just a couple of latches, and while that's super convenient, it's also a little bit problematic, because they can be stolen pretty easily in that way, and believe us, you can already find them on eBay and similar platforms for sale. So we can only hope that the aftermarket will offer us something that we can use to secure these fenders. If not, you'll have to go for some do-it-yourself solution if you want to be free of any theft worries. Number 2. Fuel Economy Unlike the Wrangler, which mostly relies on old-fashioned, naturally aspirated engines like the 3.6-liter V6, Ford decided to go with a little bit more modern approach, with smaller displacement turbocharged engines which are more fuel-efficient, at least in theory. In reality, things are a bit different. For example, the base 2.3-liter turbo 4 that puts out quite an impressive 300 horsepower is anything but impressive in this aspect. It returns around 20 mpg in the city and 21 mpg on the highway, but the numbers tend to drop significantly in variance with bigger tires and manual transmission. For comparison, the V6 Wrangler returns 17 mpg in the city, but quite impressive 25 mpg on the highway. Moreover, Jeep's 2.0 liter turbo 4 feels way superior with its 22 mpg in the city and 24 mpg on the highway. The 330 horsepower 2.7 liter V6 offers similar ratings to the turbo 4, while the 418 horsepower Bronco Raptor is good for 15 mpg in the city and 16 mpg on the highway. Once again, we can compare it to the Wrangler's flagship version, the V8 powered Rubicon 392 with 470 horsepower, which returns 13 mpg in the city and 17 MPG on the highway. Finally, let's not forget that the Wrangler is also available in a plug-in hybrid version, which besides a great mix of power and efficiency, also offers the convenience of 21 mile range in the EV mode. This 370 horsepower system returns around 20 MPG in gas mode and around 49 MPG E in the EV mode. Number 1. Engine Problems Ford owners have been having a lot of trouble with quality lately, and this includes some of the engines as well. The biggest issues are with the 2.7-liter V6, which has never been a particularly reliable unit, and some major defects didn't avoid the Bronco either. Many owners reported engine failures at extremely low mileage, after just a few thousand miles, and according to some sources, the main cause of engine failure is the bad design of the valves. Allegedly, they weren't built particularly well, so they became brittle from the heat and eventually failed. Losing compression is the first sign of this issue, which could potentially lead to critical engine defects and require complete replacement. But this V6 isn't the only problematic engine. The smaller four-cylinder unit can have problems with a turbo wastegate failure just like several other engines from the Blue Oval Company. It turns out that the Raptor's 418 horsepower V6 is currently the least problematic unit in the lineup. Thanks for watching and see you next time.